Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. I am Gary. And I'm Chris. And we've got... Kyle, hey, there you go. I love that intro, by the way. That is absolutely fire. I love it. <laughs> Gets me going, ready to rock and roll. I'm exactly. so happy to be here with you guys. Looking forward to this, man. you got to have some kind of music to get you amped up, get you yeah. ready to go. He is Kyle Provence. He is the uh, NFL Major League Baseball guy for sportsbookreview.com, along with his own YouTube channel, DFS Bachelor. You can find him on Twitter, at DFS Bachelor. So make sure you go and follow and whatnot. He is as entertaining as they come. So, <laughs> that will, I will certainly Allegedly. say that. Allegedly, my <laughs> ass. My God. Uh, you, you know everything that there is to know about anything, and that's why we have you on these shows here. These are going to be, we're not talking about news or anything like that. We are doing our draft breakdowns, figuring out who won, who lost. We're not even necessarily going to give grades. We're just going to tell you whether or not we like what they did or not. You know, I think that's the easiest yeah. way to go about it. Y'all agree? Yeah, completely agree. Completely agree. And I'm excited. You guys know everything about college football. I don't know shit about college football, right? (laughs) So you guys know who all these players are. So I'm excited. Look, I know what the teams need, but I want to find out, is that player filling the need? And you guys are the top two guys to go to for this. So I'm excited to hear your perspective on it as well. We certainly appreciate that. I don't know that we know every player because even some of the ones that were drafted first round, we were kind of surprised by. Now, we we knew a little about them. Uh, you know, Peyton Turner. We'll we'll talk about him in a little bit, but we'll uh we'll we'll hit on all of these. We are going to start today, and we're doing this four straight days: the AFC South today and the NFC South today, and then we will move on, of course, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But let's go ahead and dive into the AFC South. Write my times down so I can stamp them and whatnot. We will start off with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, several websites, of course, I've gone through and aggregated and figured out all right exactly what were the needs for the Titans. Obviously, they lost Corey Davis. Uh, they need some offensive line help. Um, they they need safeties. They need tight end because John New Smith is now with the Patriots. The yeah. Titans will roll through who they got. First round, they took a chance, and they have done that multiple drafts in a row. Caleb mm-hmm. Farley, quarterback out of Virginia Tech. Dylan Raddins, North Dakota State. He was a second-round guy, offensive tackle. Uh, linebacker Monty Rice out of Georgia was in the third round. Another third-round pick, cornerback, um, which is more a slot cornerback, Elijah Molden from Washington. Des Fitzpatrick, wide receiver out of Louisville in the fourth round. Rashad Weaver out of Pittsburgh in the fourth round. Uh, some character issues there. As soon as he got drafted, I'm talking the next day, there was some domestic assault stuff going on, so who knows what's yeah. happening with that. Uh, Racing McMath out of LSU in the sixth round, wide receiver. And that Chris, that's that's your team. This is somebody that didn't even play. I was just about to say, no, this this shocked me out of all the LSU guys. I, I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's just a freak athlete, and he thought, you know, I'll get on with the team and I'll, I'll figure this thing out. I don't know. That's just not how the NFL works. But every year we do find wide receivers that nobody's ever heard of from places that nobody's ever seen, and and they kind of yep. make their way in the NFL. Yeah. So maybe he can be one of those guys. That's a, that's a tough that's a nut to crack. But, I mean, sixth round, all you're doing is taking a bite out of the apple. Uh, the last right. one. You're, you're just taking yeah. guys based on measurables yeah. and, and athletic ability. Exactly. That's it. Uh, Brady Breeze, the yeah. safety out of Oregon, who I absolutely love, could not believe he fell to the sixth round. Um, so let's let's hit this yeah. up. Let's talk about it. In the first round, Caleb Farley, was the, was the chance that they're taking worth the risk? Because, obviously, he's had two back surgeries. Uh, there's a reason he fell to 22. But he if, if he stays healthy, which is a big if, he is the most talented cornerback in this draft. Do y'all agree? Is he healthy right now? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, he's healthy okay, right now. So he is healthy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my thing with it—it's it, just weird. So here's what the Titans do: the Titans actually had three good cover corners. Their secondary wasn't bad because their corners were bad last year. They were bad because this team had a historically bad pass rush. They had the worst sack rate and pressure rate of any playoff team since 1970 or second worst. I think like the 91 Bengals were worse, something, something crazy like that. So then they go out, they get rid of all three, a Dory Jackson shut down corner when he's healthy. I know he's been battling injuries, Malcolm Butler. I mean, we all know about Malcolm Butler and Desmond King, whom they got in the slot was really, really good for the chargers. Didn't really get his footing with the Titans. That's because he's got to cover someone for six seconds. So then they come out here, they, 
wipe out their corners like, oh, we need a cover corner. No, you need a pass rush. So now you go out and you draft a guy who you don't know if he's going to be healthy. Is the talent there? Sure. You do absolutely nothing to help your pass rush and you expect your defense to be competent. So you're still going to have a horrible pass rush. Now you're going to have a patchwork secondary and maybe relying on an injured rookie corner. Rookie corners don't generally translate well their first year. It's a tough position to get used to in the NFL. So for me, I'm not big on the Titans. I do like the tackle they took in the second round. They obviously needed help there. But for me, I thought the Titans missed the mark, and I don't see how they're going to be any better next year than they are this year with the moves they made. Do you think that so, the it, it, let me let me ask this right quick because I I mean they had Vic Beasley, they had uh, Jadavian Clowney, like they they had guys that have produced yeah. in the past. Do you think this has anything to do with scheme as far as not being able to get pressure on that quarterback? Well, I mean, a lot of it could be scheme, and I or mean, the just year guys before, the front seven was really really good. Yeah. Yeah, and they're just getting old. And Jadavian Clowney, I'm so sick of Jadavian Clowney's crap. The dude holds out, thinks he's going to be some savior for some team. The dude's an absolute moron. Then he signs a one-year deal, gets one sack, two sacks, can't play every game. I think he's the most overrated. You know, he's one of these one-year deal guys, and that's what he's going to be for the rest of his career. And everyone wants him, and they shouldn't because he's not going to do crap for your team. So, yeah, I think it's a little bit of scheme, a little bit of age, health, obviously. I don't know that this whole division, it's going to be the defenses are going to be outside of the Colts. Maybe it's going to be a lot of bad defense in this division. So I'm going to be looking at overs for nearly every one of these teams next year, nearly every Sunday. I, well, I tend to agree. Chris, what do you yeah. think? Like, I think I think getting Rashad Weaver uh, will help. I, I think that he fell as far as he did because of yeah. all of the off field stuff. But again, that's another chance sure. that you're taking. And he's, he's not a guarantee, but he is somebody that can absolutely mm-hmm. pressure the quarterback. But, I mean, who knows? Monty Rice, linebacker out of Georgia, he certainly can get pressure. He did it at Georgia. Um, you know, I, I think that they did okay. Um, I'm not I, – I will say that I don't like it, but I could see where if everything falls absolutely perfectly, it can be considered a good draft here in a couple of years. Uh, but I think it's going to take some time. I mean, they, they got some projects. Chris, what do you right. think? So, so I, I, I don't – this is a team that that obviously whiffed on their first round pick last year, and then they took another like yeah. so, like this was a, this is an organization that I think needed to say we need a marquee piece here that can sit and stand and make this team better for a long period of time, regardless of what position it is. Okay, and and I don't know that 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 Caleb does that. The other thing is is. I'm not killing them, though, for not helping their pass rush. At 22, there's nobody in this draft that's going to be a marquee yeah. pass rush player. This was the worst. So so I'm yeah. okay with them going after the DB position. I'm okay with that. At 22, there were still other DBs that I think I would rather have that I think are going to play a lot longer than than Caleb. You know, But but that's because you have – you've had the debacles in the draft that you've had the last couple of years. And, and yeah. I think at some point in time – you you keep taking these boom or bust guys and they're all bust. They're all bust. And and at, at some point in time you got to just take somebody safe, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. I tend to agree with that. Like the uh, the Simmons thing from a couple of years ago, like he didn't get to play for almost the entire first season because of that torn ACL. True. But when he hit, like he's been pretty good on that defensive line. So mm-hmm. I, no, I think and, and Kyle was right about their problems. Their cover issues have nothing to do. You you and me talk about this all the time. I it, you don't you don't cover the best cover corners in the league all come from teams that can pass the rush the passer. Every yeah, one mm-hmm. of them you get you oh. might not get sacks, but if you're making that quarterback throw the football a, a second or two sooner than he wants to, then that helps your DB so much. And and you just you you the way you help your covers is you get pass rush. It's how you stop teams from throwing the football is with a pass rush. It's not with great cover corners. Um, and, and until they can do that, but that's going to take time. They're either going to have to next year, get aggressive in free agency, which this might be some weird reset year for them. I don't know. And get aggressive in free agency. Cause you just can't worry about drafting all these guys. Cause they don't all pan yeah. out. And then, yeah. and then you also have to spend money in the draft on them. Yeah. 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 All right. So, okay, so you, you like it or you don't like it, Chris. Uh, so I did all of these divisions and I basically ranked every team, how I like them and what they did okay. inside their division. I have them. I like them second. I think I like everything that happened in this division 
worse than every other division out there. Out of all eight of them, <laughs> I think these four teams did the worst job out of anybody. It's entirely nice. possible. It's entirely yes, it possible. Because the Titans, I don't like what they did, and I have them second, and that's only because Jacksonville, who we'll get to, got Trevor Lawrence. Sure. Yes. Sure. Let's uh, let's move on. We will go with who got second place in the division uh, last year, and that would be the Indianapolis Colts. Went 11-5. and five. Their needs, uh, per all these different sites, per all these people that, that would know, offensive tackle, wide receiver, tight end, and cornerback. Uh, we will roll through right quick the list. Round one, they got Quiddy Pay, edge rusher out of Michigan. Round two, they got edge rusher Deo Adeyingbo out of Vanderbilt. They got tight end Kylan Grayson, or Granson, excuse me, out of SMU in the fourth round. Sean Davis out of Florida uh, in the fifth round. Sam Ellinger, quarterback out of Texas in the sixth round. Michael Strachan out of Indianapolis, which is strange, mm. in the seventh round. And then Will Freeze uh, out of Penn State in the seventh round. So um, we'll, we'll stick with you know, the the day one and two and just kind of get an idea. Two edge rushers in the first two rounds and then no yeah. third round pick. It, this seemed rather strange to me um, when you have so many other needs. Um, obviously, you, you always need help, you know, with edge rush, and, and I get that. Pay is great. Uh, Deo Adeyingbo out of Vanderbilt is actually a pretty good uh, a pass rusher, but at, you had so many other needs it seemed odd to go with this strategy. Did, did you guys feel the same? 100%. 100%. And I th- look, they just addressed the offensive line need today. They just signed Eric Fisher to a one-year deal, what, about an hour ago. So that's a yeah. big signing for the Colts because they needed a left tackle with Anthony Costanzo retiring. Obviously, we know what happens to Carson Wentz when he's under pressure. He doesn't perform all that well. Most quarterbacks don't, but he really doesn't perform well when he's under pressure. And that poor kid's been running for his life for the last three years. But it is interesting, two defensive ends right away. When I look at the Colts, they needed help in that secondary. I know Xavier Rhodes sort of played better last year than he did the year before in Minnesota, but they still need help in that defensive backfield. And look, we just talked about it. Helping your pass rush will certainly help your defensive backs. They uh, they needed help at linebacker, in my opinion. They need another wide receiver, in my opinion, here. Give Carson Wentz some weapons here. So I thought the draft was a little strange. I thought it was a little heavy on the defensive line. I don't necessarily think that was their biggest weakness last year. I mean, they brought in DeForest Buckner from the 49ers. That defense for the first half of the year was a top five defense. Yes. Then they just fell apart, didn't have enough depth. So, I mean, I guess for me, the Colts, I think, were a little bit better than the Titans. I don't know a lot about this Kalen Granson kid. From what I see everywhere else, it seemed like it was a reach and not not everyone was over, overall happy with that pick. And then, of course, Sam Ellinger, that poor kid, uh, you know, obviously going through a lot of stuff right now, which is really, really sad. Uh, I think it's okay. Quiddy Pay was probably, what, the second or third best pass rusher in the draft outside of the kid out of Miami, if if I have my analysis right there. Uh, So I think it's all right. They helped out their defense a little bit. I'm more meh. On the Colts, eh, it's 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 okay. Uh, nothing really splash. I would have liked to see them do more to help Carson Wentz, uh, but uh, defensively, I guess it'll be okay. Chris, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not a fan. Um, I, I like Quiddy Pay. I think I think they got a good first round pick, and and then the rest of this, I you know, I don't really yeah. understand. This is a team that I did think needed a quarterback. This was a place where I thought would have been a good landing spot for a Kellen Mond um, or, or somebody that I think is capable and can play in the NFL. Uh, Gary equates Sam Ellinger to Tim Tebow, 100%. which is his just his throwing style is just not not set up to be successful in the NFL. And I do not believe Carson Wentz is a good football quarterback. I just don't think he's good at football. I think the one year of magic that he had, he got hurt and Nick Foles had that same magic. I can't explain all that goes into that, but I know that I've seen a huge plate of Nick Foles. He's not good at football. I can't take (laughs) six months of what I saw and think that's his life. That's six months of magic and I can't explain it, but I saw six months of Carson Wentz do that, and and that's not real either. Okay, everything right. else is smoke and mirrors, and he's not very good. He's not accurate. He does he holds onto the football, and he doesn't have good decision making ability. Also, the first time in his life he ever faces real adversity in the locker room where somebody else takes his starting job, he whines and pouts and quits. Yeah, I don't want yeah. that guy on my team at all. So to get his backup as Sam Ellinger, that's. That's a that's a tough road to hoe. Well, don't forget uh, they got Jacob Eason from last year. You know, Jacoby <laughs> Brissett still there, I think. Yeah, no, Brissett's down in uh, uh, Miami. Miami now. Yeah. 
Oh, he left for Miami. He's yeah. back in the coach. Kobe became a free agent, and, and he, there you go. See, I'm he's too, many, too many. Oh, yeah, no. But uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm just, I'm real down on this team, and and I now here's what's weird. I this is how I'm thinking about these draft picks and what I think this team should do. Now let's take effect that everything this organization has done under this new regime, Frank Wright and the front office there has been unbelievable. So yeah. the chances of me being wrong and them being right are far better. But what I know of these college players and what I know of what I've seen with the Colts and the players they brought in, I just don't know what they're doing. I thought they were really close to being a great team. And the biggest anchor that they did was they put Carson Wentz on their football team. And that's, you know, hold the whole boat. I'm willing to tell, I'm I'm willing to give a, I like it grade to teams when I can understand their strategy. There's no strategy here. Like there's, it's just, Hey, these players were available and we just took them because maybe they felt like they didn't have any holes, but like they need weapons. They need guys to be able to protect uh, Carson Wentz. They, you know, we, we've seen it like Chris, you know what we're talking about. He, he's, Really bad when he has no protection. Um, He's not good. Yeah. But I also but think it's it could just with be... protection. I will say though, he tries hard. That kid will that he will <laughs> sacrifice his body. He'll I'm die. So sorry, Carl. He, he's a starting NFL quarterback. If you're I not trying, it, but... if you're not trying, <laughs> that, that can't be the baseline for you get to play. Is That's the only good thing the I can most. say. That I don't just know. Can't be it. Is is you want to do really good? Yeah. That no, just you're can't. completely right. You are Wentz, completely right, and you're way. right about Nick Foles, too. I always take a good opportunity to bag on Nick Foles. Nick Foles is absolute garbage at the quarterback position. He always has been. He always will be. I know he had that one year with the Rams. I, can't, with three, I oh. can't explain it. I can't explain Here, what I, I will explain this with Chris. that team I, and the Eagles. I really I can't. can explain it. Yeah. I can explain it. Here's It was the second season for him, and that was before everybody really got a good feel because he was no, still because developing. Nick Foles did the exact same thing, and we had years of film on him. There was something unique about that Philly football team. That There's yeah. something just strange. You know how I feel about Fletcher Cox. Like I think the, they had the perfect combination of leadership. They didn't have yes. great skill players, but everybody that wasn't a skill player was an amazing football player. Well, you remember they that, were, that they were one of the most run. talented teams in the league, and they just carried those guys, just like the Bucks carried Brad Johnson years years ago, just like the Ravens carry Trent Dilfer, shitty quarterbacks win Super Bowl sometimes. The the yep. Super Bowl win was uh, an anomaly. It was crazy 500 yards of offense for both, you know, teams, both quarterbacks, whatever. It was it was yeah. nuts because the defense got them to the championship game. Like Nick Foles was not good yeah. until the Super Bowl. Like it was it was exactly. strange. And then defense disappeared for both teams. You got it. Yeah, exactly. We, we are oh. getting off of the Colts here. Uh all right. yeah, are, yeah. are all three of us saying we don't like it or it's just eh. I think so. It's yeah. meh. I mean, I would lean don't like. I'm leaning yeah. don't like, but don't. it's meh. But it's, this is an organization I trust, so it's a weird feeling. So Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I I, I do trust Chris Ballard and in, in what he has done there, but uh but this one was I'm not used to this from their drafts. Typically I like what they do, but Either way, yeah. we will move on, and we are moving to the Houston Texans. And last season, they went 4-12. and 12. Their needs were cornerback, wide receiver, safety, tight end, and center. Obviously, we could have tossed in uh, quarterback. We could have tossed – I mean, it, it, the Texans Their needs are overall. everything. Every single position they stink at. They don't yes. have a single good player on their roster. Straight up. Brandon Cooks, yeah. maybe. I don't know. I, I will tell you this. <laughs> um, when you are trying to rebuild a roster, what you need is a ton of – Guys, you just need to take as many shots as you possibly can, trade down as often as possible, just draft as many dudes as you possibly can. And they traded up to go and get Nico Collins in the third round, a wide receiver. They they wasted picks to go up and try and get guys in the third round. So their their draft was quarterback Davis Mills out of Stanford in the third round. Third round also, they traded up and got wide receiver Nico Collins out of Michigan. Tight end Brevin Jordan. Now, I like that pick. That was pretty good in uh, in the fifth round. Uh, then they got Garrett Wallow out of TCU and Roy Lopez out of Arizona in the fifth and sixth round. And I don't understand any of this. This makes no sense. So, maybe it wasn't all Bill O'Brien. Maybe that entire front office is just complete garbage. Right. Uh, give, well, give me your thoughts here. Well, if... 
Bill O'Brien also didn't set them up very well. It's hard to have a good draft when you don't have a first or second round. And we can all agree, Bill O'Brien's the one guy during the pandemic where we're like, hey, man, pull the mask down and cover up that thing. Like, don't let anything get in there. (laughs) He looks like he wouldn't care if he dropped the baby, I swear to God. Bill O'Brien absolutely (laughs) destroyed this franchise. I mean, that's what he did. He destroyed it. And then you come in, you go, okay, we don't have those picks. And Deshaun Watson wants out of here. Maybe we'll be able to trade him for a bunch of draft capital. And then, of course, uh, that's not going to happen. No one's trading for Deshaun Watson now. We don't even know if he's going to be able to play. Probably won't. He looks like he should be suspended. I'm not buying his excuse. There's a little bit too much smoke there uh, for me to think he's completely innocent. It's just uh, kind of weird, and there's lots of jokes that we could have. That low-hanging fruit is all over the place, and that's almost a pun as well for what he was doing. So uh, you look at this team. Couldn't stop the run. Couldn't stop the pass. Couldn't run the football could throw the football because they had Watson. Now they're not going to be able to do that. So now it's supposed to be Davis Mills out of Stanford and what other. Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod. I mean, this is going to be probably be the worst team in the league. They're going to compete with Detroit for the worst team in the league. And it's sad when they they would look at Detroit and be jealous that they have Jared bleeping Goff. I mean, come on. I think Detroit right now would be like a seven point favorite and an yes, exactly. right now. I really do. Exactly. I really think do. About like, that. The, yeah, think Detroit's about that. a lot better than this team. Yes, this is going to be the worst team. And so I'm not exactly sure what they're supposed to do because they just don't have any capital. They had to go get some kind of quarterback. If you're going to trade up, I think you mentioned Kellen Mond, who went to the Vikings. That would have been somewhere where I make the move up, like, hey, let's get someone who can play. What the hell is Davis Mills out of Stanford going to do with this team? He's going to get killed. He's going to get yes. killed. Yes, He's going to be the next David Carr. He's going to get killed there. They have absolutely – I mean, Kiki QT, I, did he leave? He might have left. Brandon Cook. I mean, where the hell is he going to go with the football? Who's going to run it? This team is going to be an underdog in every single game they play, rightfully so. Not really in love with the draft. Don't understand why they're giving up draft. That you're absolutely right. They needed more and more and more picks. Instead, they waited on the Deshaun Watson thing too long. As soon as soon as he said he wanted out, they should have said, "This is our chance to get some picks back and rebuild this thing." Because there's no sense in paying a quarterback max dollars when the rest of your team is absolute garbage and you know you have no chance of winning anything. Uh, this front office has been the worst front office in the league for the last five years. They continue to do it this year. Big thumbs down for me on this draft and this whole organization. I yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. They, they were my fourth, and 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 it wasn't even close. They're, they're probably one of the, the, the worst in, in all of the, the whole draft. Um, some of that is I tried to give them a little credit of – they are doing the best that they can with what they have. All of these draft picks that they should have are all taken away from them. Okay. Right. Moving, giving up a few picks late to, to get up a little bit in the third round. That doesn't bother me. Davis mills pick doesn't bother me. The problem is, is there's no, there's nothing they could have done in this draft to, to have, to have impressed me, or I think even really to make their football team any better this year at all. I I think they're really bad. I, th- I think their their coaching staff is going to be basically playing the whole game with their t- hands tied, and and they're gonna they're gonna have to be responsible for what I believe is probably going to be an zero and sixteen team unless Deshaun gets to play. Now, if Deshaun gets to play, we have a whole different game changer because he played behind this team last year that weren't a whole lot different, and and he made shit happen. So, um, I do think he's one of the best football players in the league, and. You know, I, but but I'm with you. If he gets cleared by the league and somebody offers you two first round picks for him, you take it. You take it, and you yep. don't even you you just say thank you so much. Yeah. Let's just say if he gets cleared by the league, I'm going to go out and uh, do a few different things as well. Because if that's okay, then <laughs> hell, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. I can't do all the things he does because I've told you boys this before. I'm a grower, not a shower, so I can't be smacking him around like he was doing there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, I'll be surprised if he's not suspended at least six games. There's just no way he's not. Oh yeah. So I- that was my question. I wanted to I wanted to ask you specifically about him. Do you think? Are we looking at? A year suspension? Are we looking at half a year? Are we looking at six games? Are we looking at what do we? Is there a world that you can conceive of that he doesn't play football anymore? It's it's really interesting. Oh, did we lose him? Oh, so for me, what I think here is if Saller to anybody and admits guilt, he's he's. Are we back? We back? Do we freeze up? Okay, I I will say uh, if he pays a single dollar in a settlement, 
he's getting suspended for at least six games because he's admitting guilt right there. That's definitely against the person. Yeah. I would imagine that's against the personal conduct policy, touching people with your stuff while they're rubbing you. I would assume is against the rules of the NFL conduct policy. And if this goes where it's, he's going to go to court and keep battling this in the court of public opinion, you could very well see him end up on that commissioner's exemption list, which is nowhere you want to be. And that'll be at least a half a year. It's a really dicey situation. I will be stunned if he is a starting quarterback week one for the Texans. Well, so I'm not worried about him being a starting quarterback. I don't think that's actually a realm of possibility, but the commissioner exempt list, I would rather be there than I would rather sure. be suspended because the, the team has to pay me. And so exactly. that big ass contract I get, I'm not missing one penny until I come mm-hmm. off the commissioner's exempt list. Yep. yep, completely agree. And it won't and and he's it won't wanting to hold you, but, out anyway. So But I think if he pay if he pays a single dollar in settlement, I think you see that suspension slapped on the next day. But but don't you think that would be a better situation for him? Put you in his shoes, forget it, and and say you can pay all this out and know that you'll get a six game suspension and then it's all over with and yep. you can then fight for your trade and and get on to a better team. Everybody knows what they're buying now. They know what they're getting. The Texans know what they're selling and yep. and and you can move on with your life. Do you think the, yep. just the ability and the to to breathe again and say sure. we at least have understanding of this is what my life looks like? Yeah, I would be doing that right now. And that's it. I would have too. I would be doing. I would be doing that right now. You know, the reports that they asked him two weeks before this went public to hey pay this. I would have been like, yeah, how much and yep. where and yep. to whom? Yep. Now, because so I don't now think he's got to put, put the pink hats on. He's yep. got to be women's rights, women's voting rights, breast cancer awareness, everything that you can possibly be to support women. He needs to start doing right now. Yep. Pay that settlement. Eat your medicine. Move on and stop getting massages for Christ's sake. Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> or, or just find one professional and have them come to your house. Exactly. That, let that one person be your expert and let them yeah. do it forever. Yes. Yeah. Stop asking waitresses at the Chili's that you, that you went to in Houston to, uh, you know, don't, come to your house. Don't find your go. massage therapist on Snapchat. Let's not you do should that. Not That's do the that. best way. You should not do that. <laughs> All right. And by the way, we uh, we will have a uh, a Houston attorney on with us next week to discuss all this Deshaun Ooh. Watson stuff. So uh, so everybody, you know, if you are not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. Like the video, share it out, all that good stuff. Make sure you are subscribed on the podcast and on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we will we will have a Houston based attorney that is uh, pretty knowledgeable about this situation, and he will fill us in on on what's going on with it. Uh, we'll move yeah. on and let's talk about the. Jacksonville Jaguars. This is the last team in the AFC South. They went one and fifteen last year behind Gardner Minshew and uh, my God, who was the other quarterback that played for him? Uh, was it Glennon? Uh, Mike Mike Glennon played yeah. a little bit. They had uh, Jordan Luton as well started for them a few games. They almost beat the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay with yes. Jordan Luton at quarterback. Yeah, they they actually uh, they they fought hard in a lot of games. I'll say that. Uh, they could not yeah. get over the hump, so they end up one and fifteen. They get the number one overall pick. They bring in Coach Urban Meyer, who has oh. redone the entire staff. Of course, when a new coach comes in, that's typically what happens. But he's got a lot of college guys and a lot of old school NFL guys. He's looking at this a lot differently than than probably most NFL front offices will look at things. Their needs, yeah. uh, at least per the online sources, safety, tight end, defensive tackle, and quarterback. Um, you know, I, Gardner Minshew, I think, is a lot of fun, but obviously I do believe that Trevor Lawrence is an upgrade. We'll roll through the picks that they got, and oh, they've yeah. got quite a few. Quarterback Trevor Lawrence out of Clemson, running back Travis Etienne out of Clemson, both first-round picks. Uh, we will we will talk about the Etienne pick here momentarily. Quarterback Tyson mm-hmm. Campbell out of Georgia in the second round, and then another second-round pick, offensive tackle Walker Litter, a little out of Stanford. You've got safety Andre Sisco out of Syracuse in the third round. Jay Tufele out of USC, defensive interior lineman. Uh, edge rusher Jordan Smith out of UAB in the fourth round. Fifth round, tight end Luke Farrell. And wide receiver Jalen Camp out of Georgia Tech. Uh, that was sixth round pick, 209 for that one. Trevor Trevor Lawrence, obviously, home run hire or home run draft, whatever, on that. Running back Travis yeah. at the end of the first round. Eh, not a big fan of that one. Um Go ahead, Kyle. I'll let you uh, jump in on it on it first. Yeah, you're so I like Travis Etienne as a player, and I was really yeah. looking. I thought Buffalo would have been a great landing spot for him because he is explosive and fitting with that offense perfectly. The reason I didn't like it for Jacksonville 
first of all, you have a young running back who really set the world on fire last year, an undrafted kid. And you have so many, you're a one in 15 football team. You have so many damn holes to fill and they brought in Carlos Hyde as well. So you have a good running back room already. And then you bring in Travis Etienne. So what are you going to do with them? You're going to use them like a LaVisca. You have a, a switchblade yeah. guy in LaVisca Chenault already. So I'm not exactly sure how that fills any needs. And then that second round pick Tyson Campbell, I, I like that they took a defensive back. But for me, I'm like, look, Asante Samuel Jr. is sitting out there who just seems like a ball hawk out of Florida State, and you take the wrong guy from Georgia. Georgia, I mean, Georgia never wins big games. Georgia just stinks all the time. Every time I see them in a big game, I'm betting against Georgia every single time. So, obviously, Trevor Lawrence is a home run pick. You know, John Elway, Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning type prospect here. So, you love that. Question if they're filling the holes there uh, later on. I'm not real happy with rounds of uh, the end of round one, round two. Walker Little, I like smart, intellectual offensive linemen. So I think yeah. that's – anytime you get an l- offensive lineman out of Stanford, you assume, look, they're a smart guy. They're going to understand how to play. They'll pick up the scheme quickly. So I like all that. So it's pretty 50-50 on here. I say overall I like it because they got, you know, what everyone thinks is going to be the next big thing at quarterback, and that's always a good place to start with your franchise. But definitely some reaches there at the end of round one and round two that make me a little less, little less excited about it than I normally would be. So this is Urban Meyer, a college coach that doesn't understand how to put together an actual team because he's never had to do it. He's had recruiters that actually go out and help him. I bet Urban has never actually sat down and recruited an offensive lineman. I'm going to bet his (laughs) line coach and his OC has always done that. And, And because he has been at Florida, especially while at Florida and at Ohio State, maybe at Utah he had to beat the bushes a little bit. But at Florida and Ohio State, those are two places to where if you can get them into school with Florida and then at Ohio state, if you want the best offensive lineman in your state or in your area, you're just going to get them. You don't have to recruit them. You have to say, I'll take that guy, that guy, and that guy and be done with it. He doesn't understand. He's always had to work hard to out recruit your Alabama's and your USC's and your Oklahoma's for the best running backs, the best skill players. The running back is the last piece of the puzzle that you go out and get when the whole meal is ready. It's the parcel you sprinkle on top to make it look pretty. That's it. That's it. You can find running backs. that die. The, the dude that they're running back now was a thousand yard rusher last year. He let the league on fire and I don't know his damn name. Okay. James Robinson. Because it doesn't matter. Because if, right. if he <laughs> fell off the truck tomorrow, they would just plug somebody else in there with another rando named James Robinson. That's like that sounds like a made up name. If a cop <laughs> asked me, "Who are you? What are you doing?" That, that this yep. is like two words that are coming out of my mouth. Okay, yep. it is yep. like yeah. That, like this is the I just don't understand spending <laughs> first round picks on these play. Not that the players themselves aren't great. It's right. irrelevant. It's what you do as opposed to it's the demarcation of who the next guy is behind you. When there are dudes that nobody knows their names and they're top five or top 10 running backs in the league, then everybody who sits behind Kyle Shanahan and runs the football is going to be a top five running back. It doesn't matter where you are, what you came from, what size you are. You could be big. You could be little. You could be fast. You could be slow. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's Kyle Shanahan's going to make you a top five running back. That's what you're going to be. So why spend draft capital like that when you have lots of other needs? Urban Meyer doesn't understand that because he's never actually put together an entire team. Let me me play devil's advocate here. You're bringing in your number one pick, Trevor Lawrence. You want to make sure that he is super comfortable. So you go and get his best buddy from Clemson with your your other first-round pick to make sure that you can actually get him. I don't believe that. When you're letting a guy that's never been on the roster before – Pick your second first round, another first round. Yeah, that's pick. a little bit of an issue. I'll, I'll admit what that. the hell are we doing? What does Trevor Lawrence <laughs> know about about running yeah. an NFL franchise? Uh, nothing. What does he know nothing. about that locker room? I, I agree thing. with you. I agree with you. I I don't like the pick there, but uh, but that's uh, to me that's the only logical if we're explanation. Trying to make somebody feel comfortable. You know what? We just took you first overall. We're about to pay you an obscene amount of money and then we're still going to tell you you're carrying the, the the shoulder pads for everybody, rookie. Yeah. Okay? 
Like, no, 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 no. We've made you feel comfortable already by giving yeah. you the first round pick and the first overall pick and the first, first overall money. All right. I'm not bringing in your friends just because they're your friends. If like, like you don't get to say, Oh, well, Joe Burrow got Jamar chase and you don't get to say like these other like guys here, all of those receivers that they brought in were top tier talent anyway at a position that you actually right. need top tier talent running back is not that position. And, and this is just not what you do. You don't do that to make him feel comfortable. Screw that. Uh, the Luke Farrell pick yeah. in the fifth round uh, was not a big fan of that, obviously because Brevin Jordan was still on the board. He went two picks later to the Texans and, and he was a much more productive yeah. tight end at Miami than Luke Farrell was at Ohio state. And obviously Farrell played for urban Meyer at Ohio state, but he wasn't even on like the PFF draft board. He was not a guy that was being uh, looked at to really be drafted. He, he was maybe a seventh-round guy, and they took him in the fifth round in the top 150 picks. That didn't make sense to me. Uh, I do like Jordan Smith out of UAB. Like, he's not the, the most athletic guy. Uh, Andre Sisco out of Syracuse, that's a guy that consistently plays out of position but is, like, boom or bust. If you can get him to uh, – if you can teach him a little better about where he's supposed to be on the field – He's more of a ball hawk, and and I think that's good. They, you know, you're you're in the third round. Take some shots. Like go and get a guy that's immensely talented. And maybe you can uh, develop him. Jay Tufeli out of USC. I like him. Um, so I like him a yeah. lot too. I think that's. I mean, I don't think every pick they made was bad. I just can't. I just it, can't it, get the behind. only I, way. You wasted a first round yeah, pick. The only and you're way a team that's not very good. The only yeah. way that the Travis Etienne pick will work yep. is if you turn him into. Uh, a unicorn, basically, if you turn him into uh, Christian McCaffrey or something like that, like where he is as effective as a yeah. wide receiver as he is as a running back. And and that's something that uh, there's and, one and guy. Even, even economically, you're, James Robinson was an undrafted free agent that you're paying like 200 grand a year. And you're like, you know what? We want to pay another running back a shit ton of money because we drafted him in the first round when your secondary was one of the worst secondaries I've ever yeah. seen in my yeah. life last year. Their defense, they couldn't stop anybody. And you're like, uh, I mean, you want to make Trevor Lawrence comfortable? Get him the ball back and so he's not standing on the sideline for eight minutes while teams drive up and down the field seven times a game and put up 45 points. Take the pressure off in that way, not giving him his buddy running back. Who gives a damn about a running back? Nobody. <laughs> get, you're get, absolutely, get, get absolutely get right. Nobody cares about a damn running back. Yeah, if you if you ask a quarterback what would they rather have, a great running back or extra possessions, they're going to say extra possessions. Give yes. me more shots at the apple. Give yep. me more downs all day long. And so if you get me yep. a defensive Absolutely. player that can get me the ball back and, and stop the other team's offense and make them punt or or with a turnover, I'll take that all day long over almost any – outside of an elite wide receiver, they would take that over everything else. Yeah. We are uh, we are running long, but that is okay. We're going to go ahead and move into the NFC South. And this is the home of the Super Bowl champions who did not even win the division last year. The team That's that right. did win the division is the New Orleans Saints, who uh, it, it's going to be a little crazy. It's going to be a year of transition because Drew Brees has retired. And I never understand really what they are doing with their drafts. But, uh, but we'll go through what they need. And, and what they needed was a wide receiver, linebacker, cornerback, defensive tackle, and safety. And, you know, I mean, you can look at a lot of other things. I think a lot of this is going to hinge on whether or not Taysom Hill is actually a good quarterback or not. And, you know, if he's not, obviously you've already got Jameis Winston there, and yet they took Ian Book in the fourth round, and we'll, we'll get to that. Here's the rest of what they ended up doing. Uh, first round edge uh, rusher Peyton Turner out of Houston. That one... Uh, got a lot of people shaking their heads trying to figure out exactly what they were thinking. Linebacker Pete Warner out of Ohio State in the second round. Not a big fan of that one. Uh, Pete Warner's not the most athletic guy in the world. Now, he, he's super smart, but he's old school. So, uh, Paulson Adebo out of Stanford. Cornerback in the third round, fourth round. Quarterback Ian Book out of Notre Dame. Now, I know that Chris loves Ian Book, and we'll talk about it. But uh, sixth round, Landon Young, offensive tackle out of Kentucky. I like that pick. And Kawan Baker, wide receiver out of South Alabama in the seventh round, super late. And I do kind of like that. I think that kid's a stud. He was uh, really good for the Jaguars last year. Um, I, I will go ahead and tell you this. I didn't really like the first round pick. Now, I understand because of the measurables and everything else. And he was really productive at Houston last year. But it, it's, it was a two-star guy. And it's, it, stars don't matter. I get that. But it, still, he wasn't. He was never really looked at as a first-round guy until you started looking at measurables and whatever else. Like, nobody talked about him being a first-round guy until just a few days before the draft, really. He came in, 
and was like 220 pounds when he first got to Houston. Hit a growth spurt and is like 6'6", 6'7", 280 pounds now. I mean, super big guy, large wingspan, all the stuff that you would want. And maybe he does turn out to be something good and they got a steal here, but even still, it seemed kind of strange. So even if you take that one away, the Pete Warner pick in the second round, I thought that was a little high for him. Uh, Super smart guy, but not super athletic. Paul Snadebo, I love that one. Ian Book, I don't like that one as early as they did it. And then I do like Landon Young and Quan Baker. Now, I guess overall, I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, I, I, I like it, I guess. It's it. This is a strange one for me. You you guys jump in. Yeah, it was strange because if from just the research I did on all these players, it seemed like they reached on every single player they drafted. Not even Peyton Turner was. You know, everyone had a second or third round grade on this kid. Same with Warner. Then you go down. Then you get Ian Book. Now, so you're gonna start Jameis Winston and use Taysom Hill as the sort just sort of like he was used last year. Probably a little bit more because Jameis, I'm sure, will make some boneheaded plays and turn the ball over 20 times like he always does. So, but well, hold on. It, it, so. I thought Taysom was going to be the, the guy. I Isn't he too. the guy? Are we sure I think it's going to be Jameis. I think it'll be Jameis, and they're going to use Taysom Hill like they used him last year. He'll be the switchblade type of guy. I think that's what you're going to see. Everything that, And it's really hard because they paid them both the same amount of money, right? So you're like, yeah. what the hell is actually going on here? You're going to see them both play. That's what's going to happen. They're not going to pay Jameis $12, $13 million to be the backup and, then, and behind Taysom Hill. I think he'll be the first and second down quarterback, and you're going to see – Taysom Hill in the red zone, and you're going to see him, you know, doing little reverse plays and throwing it. Their offense is going to look funky next year. And that's why I'm looking like, you need a wide receiver. So you lose Emmanuel Sanders. You have yep. Michael Thomas. Traquan Smith is absolute trash. He can't catch anything. He's absolutely <laughs> terrible. Uh, who's that little guy that caught a few passes? Uh, Davis. He's all right, but you have no one to throw to. And you let Jared Cook go. Jameis Winston's literally going to have to throw to Taysom Hill 10 times a game. I mean, that's what's – you're going to have quarterback to quarterback action – all day long, that team's going to look really weird. I actually thought this was one of the worst drafts in the league. I didn't like in the league overall. They're one overall, of the worst for me. One of the worst, yeah. One of the five, three, four, five worst drafts on the book. And then Ian Book. I mean, might as well just sign Jimmy Clausen off the street and just bring him in because that's if you want a crappy <laughs> Notre Dame quarterback, let's just get Greg Paulson or Paulus, whatever the hell his name was. Ian Book. Hell, let's go back and see what uh, Brady Quinn's up to. Maybe you can sign him and throw him in there. Rick Myra might still have uh, some hair on top of his head. Let's throw him in. If you want a crappy Notre Dame quarterback, go do that. But uh, nah. Here, here's my uh, issue with cast. with Ian Book because I know that Chris loves Ian Book. My my issue with okay. Book is if it was a seventh round flyer or or even mm-hmm. maybe a, a sixth round flyer, I might could understand yeah. that. This team it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me. But the Ian Book situation is it, you got can they get through their progressions? Like how do they process information? He's not great at that. It, like he's a fantastic leader, so he's got that part. He's a good leader, not super athletic, not super accurate and doesn't really process information well. If you're not good at any of those three, how are you ever going to be a great NFL quarterback? I bet by the time he touches the field, he's one of the most accurate in the league. I bet I bet it's wow. two years I bet it's two years before he touches the field ever. Okay. Because okay. they do have two guys that they're going to go back and forth with that they've paid a little bit of money to. And then yeah. Sean Payton, the best offensive mind in football, maybe he's in the conversation with Kyle Shanahan, with yeah. Andy Reid. Is is absolutely somebody that you just have to trust that he's going to put his Sean Payton magic on him, all right, and not put him out there until he's ready. I, I think he has no problems doing any of the things that you said. He's just never really been asked to do them, um, and I think he's going to be just fine. I'm, well, not, I mean, I'm not worried about that. A big game. He's from Notre Dame. Like yeah. Notre Dame doesn't win big games. So they're like, okay, this kid's that game not, last year against Clemson wasn't a big game. Oh, well, one game. Okay, one big no, game, man, and then what happened game, later? Though. Didn't. How didn't they lose they it playing? after? Didn't they lose after that though too? Didn't they lose to Clemson later? Or that? They, they got only smoked, lost right? to Clemson though. They only lost yeah. to Clemson. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. how many big games have they played in? And they don't lose all of them. But yeah, okay. So you're knocking them for losing to Alabama, <laughs> and you're knocking them to losing to Clemson. I love Who the hell else that, have though. they lost to? <laughs> that's, that's, nobody. Well, I mean, and, when you're playing like Kentucky or when you're no, playing, well, you know, bullshit. Southwest they, play the hardest, State. they play the hardest schedule every year. Every year they play the single hardest schedule in all of football. Okay. And it ain't close. Hey, hey Chris, tell me this. Close, tell me this. Hey, hold on, hold on. Uh, do, do you think he had a better offensive line at Notre Dame or will he have a better one with the Saints? Uh, he had a better offensive line at Notre Dame, but uh, Kyle Shanahan's <laughs> never had an offensive line problem. 
Okay, or not Sean, Sean, Sean Payton. Payton. He's never had an offensive yeah. line problem, okay? Their offensive line's always going to be middle of the pack or better. They're going to yep. be above average or to really good, okay? that That's not a worry or a concern at all. Do you think he's ever had a wide receiver like Michael Thomas in his life? Oh, not a chance. Well, of course not. Okay, all right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think some of his accuracy issues are going to go away by the time he touches the field. I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. Here's my problem with why I hate this draft. It, it, we talked about this before we got into the draft, Gary. Um, and I can't even remember the team that we talked about it with. But it's it's like that old adage that they 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 buy good groceries, but they have no idea what things should cost. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know and so about. they just like grossly overpay for stuff. We, we talked about it with but, the Raiders. Oh, with the Raiders, that's it. It's like it's not that yeah. I hate their draft picks. It's that, that that they just have no concept of what things should cost, right? Like, how much is a gallon of milk? I don't know, twelve bucks. I, well, what do you, yeah, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. They, they 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 think these players are good. They just don't have a concept of. I don't have to take him in the fourth. I can take him in the sixth. Like they just Kyle does. I mean, uh, Sean just doesn't understand. They just doesn't know that. And, right. and so I knock him for the Houston pick because Gary and I talk college football. But I, I follow and listen to people that actually follow college football for a living. They are journalists. They they are in and out of these teams more than anyone else, and they didn't know Peyton Turner's name. They didn't know he existed on Houston's football team, and they covered Houston multiple times, like mm-hmm. big games. That That's a problem. That's a little bit that's of a bad. red flag to me. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's the issue. Outside of Ian, I, I don't – and here's the thing. Yes, they grossly overpaid for Ian. But I'm yeah. telling you, you're remembering Notre Dame the way Notre Dame used to be, okay? None of those mm-hmm. quarterbacks that came out of Notre Dame were coached by Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly is right. a completely different guy. He hasn't put many quarterbacks in the NFL. I don't know if he's put any quarterbacks in the NFL until Ian. But he, he is – the way Notre Dame has changed offensively and what he's able to do – I, I just think Ian's a smart quarterback. I do think he has plenty of athleticism. He's got plenty of arm. I think his accuracy is fine. And I think his progression is fine. I, I think they run a different offense than Sean runs. And I think Sean Payton's going to coach him up. And I think it's two years before he ever touches the field. Ever. Not not even close to sniffing the field. We, uh, Jameis would have to do something grossly stupid for him to get on the field sooner than that. Yeah. But when he touches the field... Everybody, which is not out of the question. Which is not out of the NFL, question. Everybody Ooh. in the NFL is going to know who he is. <laughs> okay, I, I, I knew. Right. I know you love him, and that's. I, I knew we had to talk okay. about it. Uh, let's move on to the Super Bowl champions. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers went eleven and five in the regular season last year. They needed running back, defensive tackle, edge, cornerback, and and offensive guard, but. Really, they, they didn't need the, the anything. The word needed is yeah. very loose. Yeah, exactly. exactly. The fact that they're bringing back so, all 22 starters in, along in with. This, yeah. In this situation, they were, uh, I mean, it was just, you could take kind of whatever you wanted. And you're, you're kind of yeah. looking ahead and seeing, okay, well, we got guys coming up on contracts next year or two years down the line. Maybe we can hit some of these guys that will fill in for them afterwards, you know, whatever. It's it, They didn't need anything. And that's a really wonderful spot to be in where you can bring back all 22 from a Super Bowl winning team. Um, start off their first round pick, edge rusher Joe Tryon out of Washington, who that surprised all of us. But again, measurables had an incredible pro day at Washington, like all this kind of stuff. So, uh, round two, quarterback Kyle Trask out of Florida. Uh, round three, Robert Hainsey out of Notre Dame. Uh, inside uh, our interior offensive lineman. Uh, wide receiver Jalen Durden out of North Texas, who I love. Like, stats guy galore. Uh, fifth round, linebacker K.J. Britt out of Auburn. I think that's a decent pick. Cornerback Chris Wilcox out of BYU in the seventh. And linebacker Grant Stewart out of Houston. Uh, I thought this was fine. Like, I had yeah. no problem with any of this. Yeah, me too. I, and it's nice when every pick's a luxury pick, right? They didn't need anything, as we touched on. And I, so I like getting the, you know, maybe he didn't produce hugely in college, but all the measurables, you bring him in, use him in situations, learn under that terrific pass rush. I mean, we know that Todd Bowles is going to put this kid in the right position. So this could be – I look at this. I like Kyle Trask taking the young quarterback. If you see potential there, who better to learn under than, you know, I'm not going to call him the GOAT. I will never – I will never, ever do that, <laughs> uh, Kyle Trask. So I, li- I I liked what Tampa Bay did here. A lot of luxury picks and picks that can develop in their – they're in a situation where they're going to learn. They're going to learn from the best people. Joe Tron's going to learn under Todd Bowles and 
all the uh, Shaq Barrett, et cetera. Kyle Trask going to learn under Tom Brady. Offensive line, they don't need a lot of help there, so it's just depth. Uh, you talked about Darden out of North Texas. I did look into him a little bit, and you're right, a stats monster. And, oh, I just get to be behind Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. And it's So not Tampa bad. Bay, they're – their position beautifully. This is one of the drafts. I, I. It's hard to dislike it when they're all that. When you don't need anything, it's hard to dislike it, right? You're like, I, I, yeah. even if they all sucked, who cares? Because they didn't need any of these damn players anyway. So I like what Tampa Bay did. If you're going to bring yeah. in an offensive lineman for depth, it, it's probably a good idea to bring in somebody from Notre Dame. So Robert Haynes. Yes. Yes. It's the way I used exactly. to feel. It's the way I used to feel about Wisconsin back in the day. Where like I don't have a need. We'll just take the best offensive lineman on the board from Wisconsin. Like he's mm-hmm. gonna be. He's gonna be. You know marginally better than everybody else. He might not be the right. best, but he won't be a bust. And and let's just do that. No, I, I like this draft. And, and Kyle hit it on the head. It's easy to draft when you don't have a need because you're yeah. not looking to try to plug a hole. You can just take the best player at the position. You can go get value when everybody else lets dudes fall. Um, we don't really think that, that the Joe trying to pick was a value pick. But, but okay, they're allowed to take a gamble. They, this is the team that's allowed to take a shot and say, you know what, boom or bust. If he's not great in three years, two years, we cut him loose and we don't, it doesn't cost us anything. We don't care. But if he turns into, you know, the, you know somebody am- amazing, then, then we hit a home run with it and it, and it works out. Um, yeah. I, there's a little bit of, I know Tom, like I heard reports that they asked Tom, Hey, are you going to be okay with us taking a quarterback? Uh, and he, he got, gave his blessing. It was like, yeah, that's fine. I don't care. There is a little bit of me that thinks it would have been funny for them to not ask him because now what do you want? What do you want most? You want to pissed off Tom Brady because oh, anytime you've seen a pissed off Tom Brady with something to prove, he's always proved it. And that's what I'm, I, I would like to have thought that they didn't, Bruce didn't ask him anything. Bruce just said, let's just take a quarterback. I don't care who you take, but take somebody to piss Tom off, to make Tom <laughs> feel like all oh, this thing guys think I'm done already. No, 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 no. And, and get him fired up again. Um, yeah. So I, I like this draft, but once again, it's it's the rich get richer. It's easy to make picks mm-hmm. when it's easy to take gambles when you don't have needs. Yes, a hundred percent. Let's uh, let's move on to the Panthers, and they needed uh, some help basically everywhere. Last year went five and eleven. Uh, they traded away Teddy B. Teddy Bridgewater is gone to the Broncos, and they are stuck with. Uh, uh, God, I just went blank. What's his name? Sam. Um, Sam Darnold. Sam, Sam Darnold. Thank I you. See Ghost Darnold. Oh there yes, sir. Uh, so they they have decided to go all in with him. They did not draft a quarterback. Their needs were quarterback, offensive tackle, safety, and linebacker. And they got eleven picks, which I am always a fan of. When you are a bad football team, and they are, they are still building. Now, obviously, I love Matt Rule. Uh, I love Joe Brady. I love you know everything that those guys are doing. What they're putting together. And this is what the Texans should have done, which is acquire as many picks as you possibly can. Don't trade up to go get anybody. Just draft what you got and and trade back even if you have to. Just acquire as many picks as possible. And that's what they did. They got 11 draft picks. Uh, We'll roll through them all. Cornerback J.C. Horn in the first round, number eight out of South Carolina. Uh, That was an odd pick because he is much more of a, a press cover man and... Obviously, uh, they don't run that a lot. They they run a yeah. lot of zone coverages, so it, it was exactly. a strange fit. But, hey, if you think, you know, if that's the guy, you got to go get the guy. Wide receiver Terrace Marshall Jr. out of LSU in the second round. I think that was a fantastic pick. They needed a, yes. a good wide receiver to uh, to continue boosting up that room, and they got it. Offensive tackle Brady Christensen out of BYU uh, in the third round. Third round also, tight end Tommy Trimble out of Notre Dame. Love that pick. Running back Chuba Hubbard in the fourth out of Oklahoma State. Uh, Davion Nixon out of Iowa, an interior defensive lineman uh, in the fifth round. Fifth round again, cornerback Keith Taylor out of Washington, another good, strong player that, you know, I I think could develop. They got uh, offensive guard Deontay Brown out of Alabama in the sixth round. Wide receiver Shai Smith out of South Carolina, who uh, that was a strange one, but he, I mean, he's super athletic. Like, he's a guy you can take a flyer on late sixth round. I mean, he's below 200 picks. Uh, Long snapper Thomas Fletcher out of Alabama in the sixth round. Don't really know why you draft a long snapper, but, hey, you know what? If you're going to do it, go get the guy that won the award for it last year, I guess. 
And then in the seventh round, uh, interior defensive lineman Phil Hoskins out of Kentucky. I I kind of like this draft a lot. I was a big fan of this. I, I didn't, you know, I, I don't really understand the J.C. Horn thing, but Terrace Marshall is somebody that's got first-round talent. Brady Christensen, yeah. I thought they got a deal on. Uh, Tommy Trimble, I think, is a really good time. I, I think that they are rebuilding their roster the way that you should when you know that you're not great and you just need to take as many bites as the apple as possible. Yeah, this is a case where I like the players they got, and I think they got great players, but I hate the strategy just for them. First of all, this team could not stop the run to save their life. Their defense was on the field forever. And, oh, yeah, you're picking eighth, and your quarterback is Sam Bleeping Darnold. You need to take a quarterback. <laughs> Sam Darnold is God awful. I mean, he's done. That Monday night game was the end for him. Once he got scared on the field, that was it. Once he got caught on camera saying, I'm seeing ghosts out there on Monday night football, stick a fork in him, it's done, completely done. So you trade away Teddy Bridgewater, who I think is grossly underrated, and I thought was pretty solid for them. The problem is they just didn't have protection, and Christian McCaffrey was gone for a while, but their offense was not Carolina's problem. It's that defense, and you're right. They're a cover two zone defense type of team, and they bring in a man corner who really kind of went higher than he was on anybody's board there in J.C. Horn. I would have loved to see them go after interior de defensive linemen or a quarterback at the spot. That's where you're going to do to help your team. I mean, Justin Fields is sitting there. Who would you rather have, Justin Fields or the Lego policeman himself, Sam Donald? I swear, look at a picture of him. He looks just like a Lego policeman. Honest to God, <laughs> all my life. He looks just like so even though I like the players, I think Horn is good. You're absolutely right about Terrace Marshall Jr. What, 23 touchdowns in two years at LSU, reunites with Joe Brady. I love all of that stuff there. I like the players. I just didn't like the strategy, so I'm a little bit down on it. I wanted to see – I, I believe in building teams from the inside out and a quarterback. They need a lot that's, of help that's in the, the old interior school. of that defense. That's the so, old school the old way school. of doing well, it. I'm an old man. Yeah. I'm an old uh, man. Hey, Even though I look it. young and beautiful, I'm actually old, you know? <laughs> So, so Kyle, I'm with you on this, but the problem is, is that eight now outside of fields the, I can't explain the fields argument. Okay. You should have yeah. taken Justin Fields here and we're done. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, the argument is, is if you're not going with fields and you are in on, we're going to see if there's anything left in, 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 um, in Darnold sank and, and can we make him a quarterback or not? If that's your decision, you can't take a defensive uh, uh, tackle here because in this draft, there was no defensive tackle that's worthy. True. There's no edge. There's no run stuffer in this draft. Now you're taking for need and you're taking somebody grossly that doesn't fit your scheme. Sure. The, the, the Joe Horn thing, all of the big boards, all of the people who make mock drafts and talk about this stuff had Horn not as the top cornerback. But over 50, I listened to, uh, oh, uh, golly, who's the guy from the NFL Network that I listened to, Gary? I talked about it on our podcast. Uh, you talking about Peter Schrager or? Uh, Peter Schrager. Yeah. Peter Schrager said he talked to over 50% of the leagues, and they all had Horn. This is before the draft, by the way. They all had Horn as their number one cornerback on the board. Ooh. They think he can do everything, and they're not worried about how he played in South Carolina in Will Muschamp's system. They're not concerned about that at all. They think he's capable of doing anything. So what, what Mel Kuyper has on his board and Rich Eisen has on his board uh, aren't yeah. what these NFL teams have. So I, I thought it was interesting that over 50% of the league did have Horn yeah. as their number one guy just just the draft experts, quote-unquote, didn't. Um, right. Terrence Marshall, in any other draft in the last five years, he's a first-round pick, and it ain't close. Yeah. It ain't close. Yeah. This draft was so wide receiver heavy with top-tier talent, that's the only reason he fell to the second. And that's just right. an absolute steal. And not necessarily like Notre Dame or Wisconsin used to be, but the offensive line at BYU was unbelievable they mauled people now i know the people are going to say all oh, the competition they played it don't matter the guy that got foot in front of them they destroyed every time and it's because they have dad strength okay they're not 19 <laughs> and 20 year olds they're 25 years old all right right this guy's going to be able to come into the league and he's going to be able to help that offensive line right now tomorrow yeah i like what they did i like the players the needs that they had just weren't available in this draft. And so I don't know if they're getting them in, 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 in free agency or whatever. I would have yeah. rather them taken fields over horn, but at mm -hmm. the same time, you know, that they, th Joe Brady thinks he's got something in Darren Darnold. I'm going to tell you this, and I've told Gary this before. If 
Joe Brady can win with Sam Darnold as his quarterback this year. Joe Brady has a lottery ticket for next year, and he can walk yep. into any of probably 25 of the 32 rooms that he wants in the NFL and tell the head coach, pack your shit, get out. I'm <laughs> taking this job. He's going to be taking over Cincinnati with, uh, with yeah. your boy I Burrow. I really do think that if he can – if he can, if we can see a drastic turnaround with Sam Darnold, I think Joe Brady can walk into almost – any franchise and tell the owner, tell the coach to pack his shit. I'm taking this stop. And, and if that happens, we're erasing this tape because I just bagged the hell out of Sam Donald. So if he turns around and throws 30 touchdowns and 10 picks, delete the tapes. Delete no, the no, damn no. tapes. Listen, that tells you this. That tells you this <laughs> that Adam Gase should be hurled off the tallest building oh in the my country. God. Just of just grabbed by his collar and his belt loop and thrown off yes. the building. <laughs> Worst head coach in the history of the NFL. Possibly. No, 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 no. That's not true. That's not true. Freddie Kitchens, the single worst okay. head coach. That coached 16 games <laughs> okay. in the NFL. And that ain't close, by the way. Adam Gase coaches circles around Freddie Kitchens. <laughs> wow. That's that coming from a Browns. You see the Browns logo behind him there. Yes, That's I it. see it. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to our last team, and this would be the Atlanta Falcons. Obviously, lots to fix with them. They went 4-12 and last year. Got a ton of offensive weapons. Offense was not the problem with them last year. Uh, however, Dan Quinn fired, gone, out of here, adios, and they bring in Arthur Smith, the offensive coordinator from the Tennessee Titans, who has been with the Titans for, uh, I mean, as long as I can remember. He has worked his way up from quality yeah. control up to tight ends coach, up to, or sorry, offensive uh, quality assistant, whatever it was, up to tight ends yeah. coach, up to offensive coordinator, blah, 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 blah. He's, he's learned under a lot of different people. Um, he can meld old school with new school. I like the fact that he is a guy that didn't have to work if he didn't really want to, and he goes out there and does this thing and has really worked hard at it. Chris calls him a problem solver. So I, we've got high hopes for Arthur Smith. Um, the, the Falcons needed the list on here included quarterback, uh, but it's basically everybody. Quarterback, safety, running back, cornerback, and guard. Uh, we'll roll through the picks here. They got, we think, the best overall player in the draft, and I think that might be over Trevor Lawrence at number four, tight end yeah. Kyle Pitts out of Florida. Second round, safety Richie Grant out of Central Florida. Uh, offensive tackle Jalen Mayfield out of Michigan in the third. Cornerback Darren Hall out of San Diego State, who was a steal to me. Uh, I don't know what the rankings yeah. had him, but I, he's fantastic uh, at San Diego State. Center Drew Dahlman out of Stanford in the fourth round. Fifth round, they got interior defensive lineman Taquan Graham out of Texas. Edge rusher Added to Kumbo, uh, Ogundengi, Ogundengi, out of Notre Dame. Let's call him A.O. A.O. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good idea. Let Gary do that, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I don't do that shit. No, 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 no. <laughs> Round five, Avery Williams, cornerback out of Boise State, and then wide receiver Frank Darby out of Arizona State in the sixth round. Um, overall, like, I was kind of a fan of this draft. Like, I, Me too. You know, it's not, it's not great, but you bring in somebody like Kyle Pitts, I think Richie Grant was – Awesome. Like when it, he's another one of those guys that wasn't highly recruited out of high school. He came in as a 165 pound wide receiver and left as a 200 pound safety. Like he switched positions. It looked great under uh, under that regime. There, um, they didn't have a ton of defensive you know playmakers, and he was a boss on that team. Uh, offensive tackle Jalen Mayfield out of Michigan, I thought was great. Like I, I think overall they got some pretty good dudes, and they took some flyers on guys that are. Talented, maybe didn't produce at the highest level in college. Um, but this is what the Falcons needed. Like, take as many bites of the apple yep. as you can and see what you got, right? They, they didn't hit every yep. need. Uh, but, they, I mean, my gosh, if you're if one of your needs is running back, like, you can go out and get an undrafted guy yeah. and, and uh, figure yeah, it out. They, they signed Mike Davis. They signed yeah. Mike Davis, who's a huge upgrade over Todd Gurley. I mean, like, a yes. massive. It, it, basically, Todd Gurley is me in the backfield. He's about as fast as I am and about as durable as I would be as well. I would be dead, and that's basically what Todd Gurley is. But I like what the Falcons did here. So their offense, you're right, wasn't necessarily a problem, but it was on occasion because you knew – Every week you were going to get Julio Jones questionable. And he, if he went out in the first quarter, I love to bet Falcons team totals last year, getting them at 20 and a half, 21 and a half. And if Julio Jones went out in the first quarter, guess what? You're not getting the team total. Matt Ryan falls apart. And that's just how it was. And they had no running game to rely on either. Bringing in Kyle Pitts gives you, look, he's not Julio Jones, obviously, but he's this matchup problem. He's this guy Matt Ryan can go to when he's in trouble, like, like he likes to do with Julio Jones. So now when we see Julio Jones questionable 16, 17 straight weeks next year, he's going to have a guy opposite of, of Calvin Ridley 
and Kyle Pitts who can get things done. I think you're absolutely right. He was the best prospect in this draft. He and Trevor Lawrence were right up there neck and neck. I, so I really like what the Falcons did. And then they started to build, you know, add some secondary help, add some help on the offensive line, get some defensive tackles in the fit. I like what they did here. Remember that Falcons defense was really, really bad to start the year. Once Raheem Morris took over, the Falcons defense got much, much better. I like what the Falcons did probably in this division outside of Tampa Bay because it's hard to hate it when they're all luxury picks. I think this was the best draft in the division. I like what the Falcons did. I think Kyle Pitts is going to have a massive, massive year with the Falcons. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I mean, this, this just could be just a huge homage to Kyle Pitts and what he is. We think of tight ends and we think of guys like Kelsey and we like the great tight ends, like the catching tight ends. We think of Kelsey and we think of Kittle and we think of Gronk. Kyle Pitts is more athletic than all three of those guys. Yeah. Okay. He he's going to str- he's not only going to open up the red zone for Atlanta, which they're terrible at, by the way. This is a team that just blasts field goal after field goal after field goal in the red mm-hmm. zone. Um, they score a lot. They don't punt a lot, but but they can't punch it in all the time. He's going to solve that problem. He's also, because of his athleticism, because of his speed, because of his, his size, he's going to be able to stretch the field like those other tight ends can't do. He's going to be able to run away from guys, okay? And, and that, I think, is going to give them another weapon because outside of Ridley, nobody on that team has been able to run away from guys. Now, I'm not saying he's running away from the best cornerback in football, but – any linebacker that's going to try and cover him, he's running away from them. And, and most there safeties. are some safeties and cornerbacks that he can run away with. Well, I mean, he's if you look, look at him, like Darren Waller, Darren Waller yeah, for the know, Raiders. Well, Imagine what he does for that, that team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think Pitts is is much more athletic. If you look at Pitts' size and everything, he is much more Megatron than he is a tight end. Yeah, uh, yeah. Vernon I mean, Davis. He doesn't, have, like, like, he doesn't have DK speed, but he's going to play the game a lot like DK. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, he did clock it like a four three six, wasn't it? I mean, it was, it was yeah, crazy that, numbers. Listen, D, DK just ran like 10 6 in, in the 100, okay? Yeah, he was, uh, what, 10 3 yeah, 7 in 100 meter? Yeah. Yeah, 10 4 7. Yeah. Yeah. D, yeah, he ain't doing that, all right? No, no, <laughs> Probably no, not. No. Did you see that race, too? DK was I, four oh, times yeah. the size of every other Everybody, person. And he was right there with them. I know he <laughs> yes, finished he ninth was. out of nine, but he was right there with them. <laughs> yes, he was. I'm so proud of him for doing that. I'm so, <laughs> yeah, the balls it, cool. it took to do that, too, man. Yeah. Absolutely. It was awesome. It was awesome. So, yeah, Kyle Pitts. I draft. I like what this team did. Yeah. But I'll tell you this, the end result, I think this team's going to look a lot like the Cowboys last year. They're going to put up 45 points. They're going to lose 48 to 45 a lot. Yep. Yeah, I, I tend to agree Until with Until they that. can figure out to stop somebody, I think that's going to yep. be a problem. When they, they went yep. and got two uh, two cornerbacks. They they helped their offensive line with Jalen Mayfield. They you know they needed uh, safety help, defensive back help. They certainly got that with uh, with Richie Grant. Like mm-hmm. I I like everything about this man. Like they yeah. they yeah. seem to do a pretty I, good this job. This draft wasn't the place to go fix their front seven, but I'm not a fan of their front seven, and that's the problem. Oh no, there's bad. not a cornerback in the league that if a quarterback if Tom Brady has five minutes to stand back there and throw the football, he's eating you. He you're losing yeah. every one of those games 100. percent like yeah. Sam Darnold's awful, but Sam Darnold might be able to pick you apart if he's got 30 seconds to stand back there, okay? Yeah. You've got to be able to get rush, and the front seven does that. I don't think they can. I don't know how they solve that. Would, definitely not with the draft right now. But well, no, not this, yeah. this year's draft was not the place to solve that. So. Yep. Right. But obviously this coming year, who knows? Like might end up a little bit better. You might end up with a, uh, a decent draft pick. You might. Yeah, who knows what, uh, what we can expect out of them, but uh, – but uh, you never know. But there's still free agency. There's still stuff going on. But I, I like what they started with here. This is just the beginning. They had a lot of picks. I'm always a fan of a lot of picks, and uh, and yep. they certainly took some guys that uh, that I'm a fan of. So I think mm-hmm. uh, I think that's going to wrap up today's show. Uh, what do you guys want to do for Tuesday? You want to do what the West maybe NFC and AFC we can West? Do the West? Sure, let's, let's do the West. We'll do the West tomorrow. We'll do the North on Wednesday, and we'll do the East so that we can wait all the way until Thursday for Chris to talk about his Patriots. Perfect. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, yeah, I'm not ready we'll to hear that. that crap yet. I'm not ready to hear all this <laughs> Patriot love nonsense. Not ready for it. I can understand it. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and get out of here. You guys go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. And, uh, and for you, Kyle, it would be sbrpicks.com slash NFL or slash MLB. 
And what yeah. do you have a, a DFS Bachelor website or just the YouTube? No, just just just, just the YouTube. I keep meaning to build a website, but I'm really dumb at those things. And I my son should do it, but then he just gets pissed off at me, and we fight about it. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's go to the damn YouTube channel for now. There you go, <laughs> DFS Bachelor on YouTube. You can also find it on Twitter, as you see on the screen here at DFS Bachelor. Kyle, we can't thank you enough. We are going to do this again Love for it. three days straight. So hopefully you will join us if you have not already. Make sure and hit subscribe and join us again on Tuesday, and we will get this thing knocked out. All right, fellas, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.